Hey, what's up guys? So we are going to be casting this game between Shark here in the blue at 1722. Oh my gosh, that is such a high rating. But anyways, uh, he's going to be facing off in the player in the red, sporting the Dark Magician Girl at 1133. So a player in the blue is going first. Let's see what he's playing. I, I assume he's going to play the highest of tier 1 decks, uh, meaning Spellbooks or E-Dragons, because... Um, you know, that's a really high rating, and if, if you get there with, like, um, a Dolph Chase, man, you, or something random, man, props to you. But, you know, I haven't been casting any games of E-Dragons, and I know some players are interested in watching metagames, and, you know, here it is for you guys, because, you know, well, the past couple of days, I mean, I was dueling with, <laughs> with that surfing Pikachu, right? But anyways, he's gonna go for a first turn Light and Darkness Dragon, more than likely. Uh, that is still a very, very good play. However, if you're playing against a deck that runs Breakthrough Skill, and they can big eye and steal light and darkness dragon, uh, you are really set up to lose. Like, there is very few things that E-Dragons can do, uh, you know, against a light and darkness dragon, unless they're also playing uh, breakthrough skill. So, he's also playing a tier one deck. So this is, like, the highest of tier decks facing off. I don't know why he, I don't know what his hand is. I mean, unless he's got, like, multiple MSTs or something, but uh, why wouldn't you go for a first of light and darkness dragon? All you have to do is banish two to sponge summon any E-Dragon, and then, um, you get lad in your hand, you go Draco sack, sack the tokens. Like, it's very, very easy to do. But, you know, bad hands, hands do happen in Yu-Gi-Oh! It is a thing. So he's going to go, and uh, he's going to activate that secret. So playing the red basically has the opportunity to, uh, you know, set a fate. That's probably going to be uh, what he does throughout this turn. He's going to uh, maybe, I mean, occasionally you'll see them flip uh, Spell of uh face down because 500 attack, not so good. You're really set up to get an OTK'd, um, you know. Um, the E-Dragon players usually can OTK pretty easy, uh, I mean, but Spellbook players, a lot of times they'll have Threatening Roar, uh, Wabaku, I've even seen some play Battle Fader, although I don't think Battle Fader is really necessary, I think, uh, you probably want to set your cards, because you're going to end up discarding cards with, uh, Spellbook Judgment Day in just a moment, but, uh, he's not going for a Judgment Day, which is, you know, interesting, uh, I mean, I would assume you're going to go for a Judgment Day ASAP, um, copy secrets, <laughs> you don't say! <laughs> But anyways, let's go ahead and open up the watchers chat, see what they're saying. And they're saying nothing, because they're so, so caught up in the duel. But, uh, you know, I think that in the the game one, I think Spellbooks have advantage over E-Dragons. Depending on, you know, uh, if they go first turn lad, then yeah, Spellbooks sometimes can suffer if they don't open up with Priestess. Because uh, Priestess is an effect, and you can reveal infinitely, and lad will be very sad. Man, if you have all these spell, Where is Spellbook Judgment Day? Why? I, I know that this card is Spellbook of Fate. I'm going to guarantee you guys, whatever the E-Dragon player does, this card face down that the Spellbook player has, it's it's going to be Spellbook of Fate or Threatening Roar. It's going to be one or the other. Let's go ahead and see what card it is. Gold Sarcophagus. Okay. So let's see what our player in the blue is going to go for. I mean, it's probably going to be one of those larger E-Dragons. I doubt he's going to Gold Star for Heavy. Uh, that is the thing. Like I've even seen the Elemental Dragons play without Heavy, without Dark Hole. And, um, I mean, I've even some, seen some play without Reborn just because they don't want to play it, because it's not necessary, uh, just to show how good the deck is. It's a deck that doesn't need Dark Hole Heavy Reborn. It's absolutely amazing. But our player in the red activates a Max C, so our player in the blue will be very sad, because, um, now that pretty much stops him from, like, going off. Like, you technically can go off and you can attempt to OTK, uh, you know, the Spellbook player. But more than likely, the Spellbook player will have one Spellbook of Fate, and things will not be going in your favor, especially if we're going to go all in. And it looks like a player in the blue, he's like, you know what? Going all in, no fear. Um, but that Spellbook of Fate or Threatening Aurora will be, uh, you know, something that you have to take into consideration. He might just make a Draco Sack, though. Yeah, he might just... Yeah. Man, special than tokens, man. More drawing. Uh, player in the red is thinking... He might want to activate Spellbook of Fate, even though he only has two. Uh, so he can't actually banish the card. Um, but he can technically flip the face down if he wants. I believe Spellbook of Fate allows you to flip uh, your opponent's monster's face down as well. Oh, it's a solemn warning on the effect to bring out the tokens. Very good use of, uh, you know, solemn warning in conjunction with Maxi. So he's letting the uh, Synchro, or not the Synchro, the XYZ go through so he gets the draw. Once Drago's act activates the effect, he's going to be like, no. Um, and a player in the blue is going to say, I think it might be GG. So a player in the, uh, blue is going to, why wouldn't you make, if you had the option to do that, um, yeah, I don't know. We'll see. I mean, even though our player in the red is going to be able to draw, you know, I don't know how many cards, 
it doesn't really matter. It looks like we're jumping into this in like a game two, unless you know. I I've honestly seen um Elemental Dragon players main deck one Eradicator and one deck Devastation Virus. Deck Devastation Virus is very good against Mermels, although Mermels are not a very popular deck at the moment. But I mean, technically, it does hit Bubble Condition of Prophecy. So he's gonna go for three cards. Um, and this is gonna be really dirty because our player in the blue can just keep on uh you know. Going for more synchros because oh, synchros. I keep on saying synchros. X Y Z cards, and it doesn't matter. A player in the red is pretty much gonna lose all his cards because it doesn't matter how many high priestesses you draw. If you don't have three spellbook cards, you can't use them. But there is also one other thing to take into consideration. We have to remember that it is quite possible that um, he might actually draw into like a Jaugen, and Jaugen is a fantastic card. And if he has a whole bunch of monsters, it might not matter. But a player in the red uh, might just end up getting OTK'd because um, there's no back row at this moment. And I don't think there is going to be a, a battle fader that's going to attack with the blaster. And, oh man, <laughs> he's like, it's cool, I'm going to drop a lad too. Um, I mean, I don't think our player in the uh, red list really could come out of that. Maybe that was actually a game one because, like I said, guys, um, I see a lot of players main decking the uh, Eradicator uh, in uh, E Dragon. Just one, you know, main deck one. But, you know, side decking the other two is great because, you know, even against other decks, <laughs> hey, getting rid of your opponents, all of their spells or all their drafts is still pretty dirty considering uh, you've got out that card basically for free. Anyways, especially if you can big eye take their monster and then go for it. It's it's a very nasty thing to do. But uh, this is the highest tier of decks. And uh, personally, I really feel like um, the spellbook player, if he just would have went for a Jaugen, if he just would have went for a Jaugen, he had a warning. And if he had a, a warning, a Jaugen, what was the E-Dragon player going to do? Normal summon? Okay, Jaugen. That's it. But the player technically did have heavy. Um, so, wait, wait. The player had heavy. Why, why didn't you heavy storm immediately? I thought that would have been a much better idea. Oh, wait, wait, hold on, hold on. I think the Grand Spoke Tower, I'm not sure if it counts itself, but then Dragon could have been special summon, and that obviously would be a problem. So perhaps that's why he not he didn't heavy in the very beginning. But anyways, hope that was a fun game for you guys to watch, but thanks for watching. Asian Eyes, signing out.